Ahead of the June governorship elections in Kiti State, aspirants of the People's Democratic Party have rejected what Congress to elect ad hoc delegates, while the APC postponed its primary elections to pick flag bearer. We take a look at the build up to the elections in Kiti State. Still on the breakfast this morning away from Ikiti State, Elections TechPoint Africa is a digital media company that amplifies the best innovations out of Africa through its publications, data and events focused on innovations provided by TechPoint Africa in Nigeria. We'll also be looking through today's papers and analyzing the big stories of the day. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning. Welcome to The Breakfast. It feels great to be back on your screen this morning. I am Messi Boko. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Thanks for joining us on what promises to be a thrilling edition of The Breakfast. Mercy, good morning to you. Good morning. Looking fabulous as always. Same as you. I can't wait to get to the <laughs> trending stories, especially <laughs> what we have to talk about the last one. Wonder shall never end. Of course. So but it's usual. We set the conversation with top trending conversations. I mean, stories making the rounds across the board. And the first on the list this morning, we'll be looking at the fact that uh, the Director General of the Progressive Governors Forum has resigned. Saliu Lukman resigns as the APC Governors Forum DG. And this is coming on the heels of the controversy surrounding uh, the planned convention. Now, some people say uh, that prior to this time when the governors had meetings, uh, they had talked about his resignation, asking that he should resign. But one thing you need to know about Lukman is that he's been, been very strong on his position about the delay of the convention. He's constantly talked about the fact that the Keteka committee delaying the convention was not uh, anything good for the APC. And so all of that. Now, we haven't seen the letter, however, of his resignation. Uh, but a lot of people think that it's connected to the convention and all of the controversies surrounding it. Yeah, yeah but, but for me, I mean, I follow the conversation online and, uh, you know, on air. Um, I'm wondering what the uh, hula baloo is. Permit my use of the word. No, that's fine. Um, um, with the Director General of a Governor's Forum, he, he is just an administrative personnel, you know, for um, that Governor's Forum, you know, and... Uh, does it really matter, you know, because it's about the politicians. Um, if he resigns, they'll get someone to stand in for him, you know. Um, so I, I wonder what the whole about is. Of course, the APC uh, have had their issues with the convention, you know, and the divisions within the party and the People's Democratic Party is saying, you know what, we're daring you, go and hold a convention, let's see if we can even put something together, you know. But I, I think, I think um, maybe the political watchers will want to see what plays out because the governors have been meeting. Now, some people think that uh, Suleiman Lukman has been very, very, uh, very, very great in terms of his contribution towards the development of the APC policies and some of the states that the APC, APC controls in Nigeria. So, um, a, a lot of that. But like you mentioned, I mean, is, is it a big deal? What's going on? But for me, I would always say that interest would always play. So, wherever the interest is not serving, I mean, the governors would probably say, hey, step down because exactly. you're not serving our interest. Exactly. And he could also resign on the basis that his interest also yeah. has not also been considered. So, however, this is politics and yes, politicking. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for, 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 for those who are saying, you know, the, um, of of course, a man's uh, uh, contributions to the party to ensure that they continue to consolidate on the gains of the All Progressives Congress, especially across the straight states in the country. And the re the real people that, that matter to me are and the, the governors, po politicians, the governors. And um, uh, the, the role of Governor Mai Malabuni, um, you know, cannot be uh, overemphasized in in ensuring that the APC spreads its tentacles. I mean, now the party has, you know. Uh, once one a foothold in the south south it was never that the case before we all know what happened when they went to government house cross river state and of course i had a governor cross river state uh decamped and moved to the apc you know so so i i think i think um uh the, the governors have this on lockdown you know they have this, this these are the power brokers of the party so right? very so, valid very yeah, valid i mean yeah. the, uh, the point you have actually raised is very valid because some people also have queried why you have uh, suleiman lukman as the dg why is he a governor 
what is he doing there? Because uh, people would say, if you have the governor's forum, then it should be a point where you have governor's networking mm. of, from yes. the same political yes. party. So yeah. what business does he have, you know, being in that particular spot? But however, you can also take out the fact that uh, he's relevant, his contribution, mm -hmm. and what have you. But interest would always come true. I mean, that's where politics in, mm -hmm. because politics is about interest. Interest yes. is politics. Yes. And that would continue. So where, in a situation where your interest is actually not being served, or your interest uh, does not represent the interest of the party at the end of the day, then you could be kicked out. Yeah, it's possibly should be. Some people are also arguing that in Nigeria, nobody resigns. You're only pressured to resign. <laughs> so uh, that might that, just be that, the that, case for you. That, that, that's not a bad point. <laughs> did, did he actually resign? Was he pressured to resign with it? Because, I mean, if, if I were the DG of um, such a political party, I'll be thinking of the, the perks of, I mean, I mean, you're looking at um, the politicians. They're the ones who have interest. No, but, but I think because he's been very vocal about mm -hmm. some issues, mm -hmm. and maybe that's not even playing well. This is me just saying, playing yes. well and yeah. sitting well with the governors. And so it's possible to just say, who are you again? Excuse me, um, <laughs> are you a governor? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the case. But uh, like you rightly mentioned, they have it on lockdown. Let's see how yeah. things pan out for them. Indeed, indeed. Of course, well, um, uh, shoot anyone who tries to attack the prisons is what the Minister of the Interior, uh, Rafa Rebeshola, has asked the prison officers to do. Uh, should there be any prison attacker that tries to attack the, uh, any attacker that tries to attack the Nigerian prisons? I mean, it's been an issue in the past with um, uh, the attacks by unknown government and other persons, even in the north, um, with the terrorists attacking uh, prison formations in the country. Um, uh, the one that really strikes fresh in my memory is the one that occurred in, in Oweri, the Imu State capital, because all the facilities close to the, uh, the prison are near where you have the government house and you also have the, um, uh, the police uh, headquarters. You know, we also remember what happened in Edo State uh, during the period around where you had the ANSARS agitations, um, where it was a prison break. And so we've been having these prison breaks and most recently another one that was really, really well publicized. So um, a statement issued by the, uh, uh, the spokesman, media advisor to the Minister of Interior and uh, former governor, Arek Beshola, uh, says that the minister gave the order while inspecting the Agodi custodial center in Ibarro now. Some people feel this is um, a bit harsh, while some people feel, you know, you have to meet force with force. Um, so shoot anyone that attacks the prisons. So, but uh, now this is, uh, this, is, this, this is actually an instruction coming from a minister asking that people should go ahead, encouraging extrajudicial killing. And is that what we want for a democracy? Don't we have a system that should check all of the excesses? I mean, why do we even have to? Are we saying that we're not even capable enough, that we don't have a system and intelligence to um, put out to withstand these attacks? Because it sounds like we're very overwhelmed. And we're saying that's, a, that's an organized structure. It's when, that's not a forest. The prisons exist in a particular location, and that's number one. And then you have... Uh, a location. So what happens to intelligence? What happens to ensuring that these people don't come, you know, to the facility to attack the facility? Mm. So uh, it, it's, um, I really don't know if that's very logical. I, I don't know how a minister would wake up and give an order. But, but is, in is, a is, is, that, is that what Nigerians need, you know, to hear? Um, needs to hear uh, as, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that you wake up and encourage the people should go ahead and as, shoot as, at random? As, no, he, he's not saying people should shoot at random. And I, I've, I've, I've listened to comments on, on this, especially online. And now that Twitter is bad, people have found their voice. Or let's say they have found their, their <laughs> wings. No pun intended. But, but you know, um, um, why would you go attack a, a prison facility? The, the minister used the word. He called it red zone. He says it's a red zone. So if it's a, re it's a security zone, you also need to act with decorum. I mean, ha have you tried using your phone uh, at a military checkpoint before? I understand all of that, yeah. but I don't think that that's a justification. Yeah. I don't think that that's a justification for a minister to give an order that... But, but, because that would, be, that would be encouraging the officers... Okay, so this is what we're saying now. You, get to the get to a checkpoint, and somebody yeah. is acting extra. Just shoot. No, and you know, and you know, and you know the campaign that we're pushing against, and you know the campaign that's on against police brutality, and how we're asking that people should be civil in their conduct. 
why should why should we even allow does it because it actually just looks like we're not very uh, structured enough we have been overwhelmed by um, this man or non gunmen and we cannot decipher we can use intelligence and order security tactics or strategy to um, win win over this persons or you know um, capture them however the case is and then you're asking I, as much as it sounds like it's a good idea but I think that that's not very you, you, it's not you, very you, you um, have a fair. point you have a point um, you know regards as regards the, the the human rights angle you know and, and people have stated this as well now listen to quite a number of commentators especially the human rights community um, in Nigeria um, talking about you know the safety of life, extrajudicial killings, and all that. Um, but 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 the fact that you you what if you're just looking around? <laughs> looking around is, is no. I'm, I'm not saying looking around. You were just looking around. You just oh lurking. Yeah. Okay. So you you have you have this so you, on, on two facets. Those who um, will be trying to breach the security of these uh, mili this, uh, prison uh, facilities or correctional centers from outside, and those who will try to breach the security from inside basically the prisoners who want to escape. Now, I think that if it's about the prisoners escaping, then of course, shoot to kill um, may not be too ideal. You can try to capture them. From the inside. From the inside. But if it's about uh, external attacks, you mean, why would you go attack a prison facility? But you know, like in some of the movies, because I, I think that maybe we sh we uh, we had to learn all of that from some of the movies that we see. Of course, you have Prison Break and all of that. Yeah. It usually would not just work. There's there's a local penance that says the rat inside outside cannot come without. No, you're not saying. You're not saying. I'm not saying it works. No, what I'm trying to say. The rat the house. Uh -huh, and then you invite rat outside. Thank you. So it's not possible. So first of all, we need to look inwards. I mean, that's so rash. Uh, do you even think, do, are they even empowered enough to go ahead and shoot and what have you? I'm thinking that there are other ways, you know, to solve these issues. The human right angle, like we have mentioned. Very we can't, important. We can't, we can't yes. behave. We can't constantly act in a different way mm -hmm. and expect a different result in a democratic setting. Well, why would you go, I mean, if, if anyone, you know, it, it, for instance, we're talking about the bastion of democracy. How, how would somebody want to get to the prison? That's number we, one We're question. talking about the bastion of democracy, the United States of America, for instance. Um, try attacking an American embassy. You, you carry gun. You say you won't go attack. <laughs> try attacking an American embassy and see what will happen. You don't want to hear whether, or oh, let's try and capture him to see if uh, he, 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 you know, he's deranged or whatever. But also, you, you also want to ask um, that this order, should it be coming from the minister? That's also another question. He's a minister of interior. Okay, I'll give you an example. The, the British citizen who, um, who attacked a synagogue in, in Texas, you know, he, he freed all his captives. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened to him? I mean, there, there have been several situations where there's a, there's a hostage taker, there's a terrorist, he goes into a mosque, uh, or he goes into a church, or goes into a school, and maybe they're able to free the captives, but they, they, they decide to take out the person. So, so th this is what I think. As much as that sounds very logical, as much as that should be what it should be, I think that we have decided to take the position of being very reactive every time things happen. And that's on that premise that we're having that m the minister, Rauf Awek Beshola, saying, shoot whoever you find around, you know, trying to attack the facility, w which is very reactive. So why don't we get to the other side of the divide and be proactive? and All put right. up measures right. and ensure that our prisons are safe and prior to this time we never had a time where prisons were attacked so where, where are we getting it wrong what's going on why can't we have the intelligence could it be that we have an inside job as people would say is there a collaboration what is going on so this is some of the questions as much as we would say if we have to defend our democracy then i'm thinking that we, we we really don't have to tour that way really it's very rash that's my I, I, that's my thought I, I agree i agree you know um, the fact that we need to have intelligence um the gathering mechanisms that can at least forestall you know these attacks and uh, uh predict when they would happen and all that but even sometimes the best of intelligence gathering uh, um, uh, systems do not work if if it were so we'd not have had 9-11 yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so, so sometimes you won't see it coming. You know, sometimes you won't see it coming. Let, let's, and you let's, have to, you have to act decisively, um, especially when you notice that 
you might be overwhelmed. Okay, that's why that's why climb. That's why climb. Have you been to a prison before? Have you been to a prison? I have been to an African prison. Yeah. Okay. Fine. 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 Home girl. But but the thing is this. Yeah. Sometimes the prison facilities may not be as heavily armed and equipped to withstand a heavy attack, you know. They may just have, you know, weapons and all that. How many do are they, they? Do they even have the weapons to shoot? They do, they do. But it may uh, how, be... Are you, are you sure? Oh, the, yes, the yes, non yes. Let's even Let's even mm -hmm. go by the statement. Let's even agree that it's fair that mm -hmm. uh, people should shoot anyone you find trying to attack the prison, according to the order from the minister. Uh, do they even have what it takes to shoot? How many bullets can they put oh, up? They, they do, they do. But you the thing think? about... Yeah, they, 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 they have weapons. No, yeah. But the thing about it is it's, um, uh, you know, do they have enough uh, ammunition to withstand uh, a large attack? But, but that, we're saying one and the same thing. Good, good. So, so, so you, instead of waiting to... Be attacked. The person who is coming with weapons... Is it coming to drink tea with you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, no. The person who is coming like with the weapons <laughs> is is he coming to drink? He's not coming to drink tea. He's not coming to say, "Oh boy, how far now?" He's coming for you. If it's a, an unknown gunman, if it's a terrorist, if it's a bandit, they want to get in there and get their guys out. So, so, and so they, in they, medicine, they yes. would say that this, they call it preventive, and okay. I'm saying that we should toe the line of preventive. Let's not get to that part where we have to react, shoot anybody. Let's stop them from coming. I mean, they would say the best form of attack is defense. defense so why definitely. don't we, you yeah. know, build up the defense and not allow these persons? It should also be like you can't even attack the embassy. The, just the same, the thought of you wanting to attack the embassy, you know what you're, you're, you're going to be faced All right. with. Okay. Anyways, we need to move away from that. Uh, still part of the top trending. Uh, let's see how things actually pan out. Make sure you are very careful if you have to visit anyone in the prison, especially if you, because you could just Ooh, be sure. It's, it's <laughs> no, I'm not saying. The, the word is attack. The, the, the word is attack. So yeah. what if you open your boots? Have you thought about that? You pack your car and then you're trying to bring minute, out something. I don't think the and minister. And it looks like a threat. I don't, th I don't think the like minister is saying somebody opens. shoot anybody who is around. No. So, no. so I'm okay. just creating a scenario where you pack your car. Probably you have to go visit an mm -hmm. inmate and then you, I, I you open your car. It feels like you're being very hostile. Attack. <laughs> attack no, is, it, it could, it could, it could, it could actually be seen as an attack. I, 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 I think I, I get where you're coming from, and I think I also get your, your, your concerns. It should be the concern of every the, the, the tendency of our security agencies and our uniformed uh, men to, to, to be excessive, to, to go over and above, you know, and to abuse certain privileges and rights given to them. Um, so definitely, they need to proceed with caution, and maybe the minister should have used them. Um, a bit more a different words and but let's see how we how it pans out we but I'm, I'm interested in, in your next story <laughs> no i know you're very interested so uh, on, on top chat this morning a uh, groom allegedly impregnates uh, event planner so does this uh how does that charles that, that i've been asking myself could it be fiction <laughs> so someone took to twitter tango twitter is i mean the brand has been lifted so we have our voices again and so let me read the tweet for you so we have we're having a big issue at the moment. Event planner is pregnant for the groom as we speak. Man is terrified and no one can reach him at the moment. The bride resides in the United Kingdom and the groom resides in Nigeria. God help us. Always God would have to help us for all of the confusion and the nonsense that we cause and then we call God to help us. So but in my mind, when I saw the story, I laughed at it. And I was like, could it be another fiction? Could it be that someone is very excited and they pull up about this story? How can these things be? Do they, these things really happen? So these are some of the questions that's been popping up in my head. But what do you, you think? Know, you know, it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's um, one of those things that make you say, oh, I thought I'd seen it all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd seen it all. I mean, to start with, how how did the groom end up getting involved to such an extent with the event planner? She's an event planner. And you know the event planners usually deal not just with the grooms, but with the women as well, a lot with the brides. Mm. You know, so, um, and, and, and sometimes the bride will be the one to say, okay, I, I like that planner. I think we should go with her. You know, I like this one. You know, we guys are sometimes we're too we're too serious for our good. You know, so so it means the the bride obviously knows this lady. You know, so how how does that happen? I I, I don't. I mean, I'm a man, and and I, I can't really wrap my head around it. It's, See, it's, so so like I said, I have a lot of questions popping up, but it's just uh, 
some people would say the fact that she's away, like you mentioned, it's it's possible because we're trying to we don't have all of the information. I mean, the story, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're just trying to paint a scenario. So there's a tendency that the bride, of course, has been stated is not in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and maybe she probably would be the one that would have suggested that oh, this is it, my husband to be is in Nigeria, so you have to be in talks and keep talking and all of that. But whose who's blame should it be? The, the First of all, it's unprofessional for the event planner. Very, very unprofessional of her. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a he because we already know she's pregnant. It's very unprofessional. And also, it's very unprofessional of the man as well. Okay. So both of them share the blame. They take the blame. Because as, a, as an event planner, I'm not an event planner, but common sense would want to um, say that you're not supposed to meet in those kind of places, confined I mean, I mean, spaces, go I mean, to his house. Yeah. You should have an office, even if it's not an office, an open space where you meet and have the conversation. It, and if you think that he's actually yeah. crossing the boundaries and mm -hmm. stepping, you know, going beyond what he should, then you should probably call the bride's attention, try to pull up. Oh, someone will be saying she's speaking you know, some Spanish right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. But I it's mean, really sad. I, mean, it, I, just, really I, sad. I just can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's even, let me put mm -hmm. myself in her shoes now. Mm -hmm. The bride who is in the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. Mm -hmm. If there's something to go by, mm -hmm. I, would, I would be feeling at this point in time. I, I, I hear from, from the reports that, uh, like you said, she's in the UK. And that the efforts, let me just say what he said. The man is terrified. No one can reach him at the moment. Um, He's terrified so, of what so, exactly? So, someone needs to check on that guy. <laughs> he needs to check on him because, I mean... Um, so he doesn't do anything to himself. Oh, really? Because, I mean, if, if they're trying to reach him and they can't reach him, then someone needs to check on him. Try. So, so some, some other people will say, well, it's okay if he does anything. I mean, I, I... Oh, really? Yeah, that's what some other people <laughs> you know, would say. You know, he should why why would he be terrified? If, if the information gets out there as, as, as a groom, all right? Mm. If the information gets out there, it's on the internet. I know that my wife to be will read about it. So you know the story. You know the statement that say if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. It's almost the same thing. But if we, you can't face it, why why do you indulge? We don't want him thing? harming himself. Two mm. wrongs don't make it right. Mm. Mm. But I mean, I mean, okay. If, as a guy, if you want to, <laughs> these are some of the things that make you go out. You want to, you want to be Randy, okay? You want to be Randy. You want to, um, at least have spare thought for the woman, you know. If you must be, I'm, I'm not advocating for it. I'm not advocating for, but they're not married, but still you should be faithful, that's my, my policy. But if you must be Randy, um, have some dignity, go about it with some dignity, go, go far, go far. Just, I mean, how many million <laughs> women do we have in Nigeria? I have no idea. How, it, had, it, had it, to be, it had to be the event planner. Oh, come on, man. Well, we, we actually wish the bride, I mean, like I would say, because I still have to ask myself, do these things really happen? Mm -hmm. But we wish the bride, uh, it's not a do or die affair. We wish her the very best and we hope that the groom is safe wherever he is. I, I, I have okay. a question for you. If you were the bride, what would you do? Nothing. I don't know. I'd probably be thinking of what to do. Will you, will you call off the wedding? I don't know. <laughs> you know you you know the truth is you, you never can tell what you can do until you're faced with the situation so if i tell you that no i won't call off the wedding it's because I, I really don't know i don't know how she feels right now until you're wearing the shoes and then you can take that decision so i could say no i call off the wedding no i won't call off the wedding no i will go ahead but but because it's not me, I can't tell until it's me then. <laughs> Messi is trying to jump. Anyway, um, um, Twitter is back. Twitter is back and of course, it's back with its drama right here in Nigeria. Well, this is the much that we can take on Top Trending today. Definitely come uh, with more starts tomorrow. We'll step on the brakes and when we come back, we head straight to the newspaper review where we take a look at the big stories making the rounds and we'll have a guest joining the conversation. Good morning.